Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our New Jersey's Chun Chun One Prayer Visual. Today is Monday, April 15th, 2024. Let's begin by greeting our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Chun Jin Chapumake Kyambe. Battle. We will now recite the family pledge first in Korean. Number five, our family, the owner of Channel Cook, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on true love. Thank you. Now for opening prayer, can I please ask um, Mr. Prosper Kaluba to open us up in morning prayer, please? Thank you. Let's pray. Good morning, Heavenly Parent. Good morning, True Parent. Today is Monday, April 15, 2024. Come to bow to you to, as a heavenly parent and true parent, to all saints and sage. We came this morning, Father, to say thank you. Thank you for your love you are sharing with us all the time. We just receive from you the truth through Reverend Damien Dunkley with uh, the conclusion of Blue Dragon 2 here in the East Coast. Thank you. You prepare this because you love us. The education we receive every day help us to grow spiritually, to love you, to love true parents, to love brothers and sisters, to love the families. Thank you, Father, for all this and coming this morning, opening our heart. We are prepared to receive again what you did prepare for us through your son. Thank you. We need this time to invite you again to stay with us for this new day can be the successful day in all aspects of our life. Let's offer this prayer. It's on my name. In my name, Prosper, Kiluba, Bless and Family, Aj. Mm, Thank you so much, Mr. Kuluba, for that beautiful opening prayer. Okay, we will now go into our morning light stretches. So we'll begin by taking three deep breaths in and out. Three deep breath in and out. Another one in and out. One more in. And out. All right. Okay, we'll begin by doing up and downs. We'll do that 10 times. Okay, so go up, down, one, up, down, two, up, 
down, three, up, down, four, really squeeze your back, up, down, five, up, down, six, up, down, seven, up, down, eight, up, down, nine, one more, up, and down. Beautiful. Okay, we'll do a shoulder rotation. Five, four, three, two, one, other way. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. And we'll pull our hand towards you. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch hands. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Do wrist rotations. Five, four, three, two, one. Other way. Five, four, three, two, and one. And we'll do deck rotation side to side. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, and we'll do body rotations. Ten, five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, beautiful. In the last 10 seconds, massage any body part that you feel needs it. and one. Beautiful. Okay, I hope everyone's wide awake, warmed up, and ready to share any appreciations and gratitudes for today. I will see you guys in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Okay, I had a really great breakout room, but I was asked to share my appreciation today. Uh, I feel like my appreciation today was to really reflect um, the last week on the Blue Dragon Tour. I was able to attend the Chicago um, Blue Dragon Tour, and um, the whole week, it was a lot to, in the two days, we got so much in the last two days, so I felt like this whole week was able to really process um, what we took from the Blue Dragon Tour and also, you know, really grow my heart. Um, I don't know if you guys seen my testimony that I shared in the Chicago Blue Dragon Tour, but basically my testimony was I was feeling a lot of anger and, you know, um, pain that a lot of people weren't understanding True Mother's Heart. And, you know, after my testimony, I was able to hear a lot of feedback and really try to understand um, why I was feeling this way to everyone who wasn't uniting with True Mother. Um, and I was really able to um, take a step back and understand, you know, a lot of people had so much love for True Father. And, um, you know, a lot of people joined the church because of True Father. Now, because, you know, we're trying to unite and those True Mother, um, a lot of people are getting, you know, um, taken back that they feel like True Father is being put aside. Um, but that is not the case at all. If you really understand True Mother's words that, and True Father's words that, if you really understand True Father's heart, that is not what True Mother is doing at all. Um, but, you know, it's still a lot of people's hearts is really feeling that we're, we're doing that. But, you know, we were able to have a... Um, a gathering with our young adult in Michigan and have a really deep conversation um, and give and take with our pastor Takami and answer any questions about um, what's going on um, with True Mother and True Father and how we're supposed to unite with True Mother. And I was really grateful for Pastor Takami to really answer any questions that the young adults were having um, about what's going on um, with all this and. You know, at the end, um, everyone was able to realize that, you know, um, True Mother is the only person that really, truly understands True Father. Um, and, you know, we say that we know True Father so well, but really True Mother is the one that stuck with him, even after he passes. I, I don't know what person can go into his um, burial every day for three years and pray to him, set food aside for him. Um, but, you know, it was a great gathering with the young adults and answered so many questions. But ideally, everyone understands that eventually we need to all unite with True Mother. And hopefully that will get to that point where everyone can do that um, easily. So, yeah, that's my gratitude and appreciation today. Thank you for listening to me. Um, we will now be moving on to True Mother's memoir. So um, please prepare your hearts and minds as we listen to Dr. Ward as he shares True Mother's words and his insights for today. Oh, Dr. Orr, please unmute. I'm very sorry. I, anyways, uh, I wanted to thank you for your sharing, Jeanette. That was a beautiful sharing. And I thought this morning as you spoke about as the Israelites prepared to go into Canaan, you know, some of it was the young people that all got it, you know, and they were able to unite with Joshua and go into into Canaan. And that's that's what's so exciting is that it is the uh, the second generation, third generation that are that got it and actually is able to connect with uh, True Mother and through all of you, we can all be able to to connect with True Mother. So thank you so much for what you shared and for your leadership. Really, this is very, very important. So thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, if you can join me now, let's uh, read this morning's Mother of Peace passages. Every, every year, a team from the H.J. Magnolia International Medical Center, together with volunteers from various walks of life, offers medical services in Southeast Asia and Africa. In these countries, many people despair for lack of medical treatment, lack of medication, 
sometimes leads to amputation, blindness, or even the loss of life. My husband and I established the H.J. Magnolia Global Medical Foundation in the hope of relieving some of this suffering. Its purpose is to serve as a foundation for humankind to achieve total health, to provide everything from voluntary medical services in impoverished areas to enlightenment as to the cause of disease and the path of true health. Women unite religions in the Middle East. In 1969, on our first world tour together, my husband and I visited Israel. The day we arrived was extremely hot. Israel is a small country, one-fifth the size of South Korea. It did not take us so long to visit all the sites mentioned in the Bible. As we toured, we reflected on why the history of this area, which seemed to us so peaceful, has always been rife with disputes, conflicts, and terrorism. I don't, is it possible to, to share the next paragraph as well? Or if it's not possible, I, I can just go from here. Uh, no, it's not. It, okay, that's no problem. Yeah, so, sorry, I should have checked that before. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak primarily on uh, that, that, that uh, final paragraph today. Uh, let me just share my, my screen with everyone. So... Um, Anyway, in this in this passage concerning the Middle East, you know, Mother talks about why is there so much suffering and terror and other things in, in this region of the world? And I think the question that we have to also ask ourselves is why have true parents gone there over and over again? And so I want to talk about that particularly this morning. But I want to begin maybe from a, a unique angle and... Uh, mentioned that uh, this is this is a picture of true parents at the time when they 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 visited the Middle East this is 1968 when they when they went there at that time um we'll save that for tomorrow um Dr. Shin Uk Kim I think that many uh, older members they know her she was also known as Lady Dr. Kim this is a very interesting photo if you'll see beside uh, to the right there of Lady Dr. Kim, you actually have a Pastor uh, James Stevens. And I believe that that might be Milhan in the white T-shirt there, sitting on his father's knee, uh, Reverend Milhan Stevens, who is our New York church leader nowadays. So anyway, beautiful picture. This is Lady Dr. Kim. And uh, Lady Dr. Kim accompanied True Parents and really kind of was in a Damonim type role for many years in terms of her traveling with True Parents and the role that she played. And uh, she visited many different places with them. And one of those places was uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, where you have the, the Mormon church and it's like the, the world capital of Mormonism. The Mormons have achieved so many remarkable things. They have over 6 million you know, tithing members in the, in the United States dedicated and their children go out and be as missionaries when they get to you know, like 18, 19 years old and they spend you know, one to two years at, in a mission country. And also so many important businesses in the United States, like Marriott or JetBlue or Black and, Black and Decker, even Staples. I mean, basically those businesses, they're, they're affiliated with Mormonism. They've grown and they've developed really because of the Mormon church. So it's very clear that God has really blessed Mormonism. But uh, and Mitt Romney in 2012 was actually the Republican candidate for the presidency of the United States. So they've gone gone very, very far in their their history, which dates back to the middle of the 19th century. They've become a, a force to contend with. No question about it. But, you know, there are certain things, uh, you know, they have they, they have a wonderful lifestyle. They, they are models in terms of being family centric. They're many wonderful things about them. But, you know, some people, they examine the teachings of Mormonism and they seem very unusual. And uh, Lady Dr. Kim spoke about that. And she said that, you know, actually the revelation of Mormonism was not really like the highest revelation. But the point is that Joseph Smith, when he received that revelation from God, uh, 
he took it so seriously. He took it so seriously to the very depths of his heart. And uh, finally, in, in 1844, as many of you know, he was killed by an angry mob, you know, because of because of his faith, you know. But he didn't waver ever. And Lady Dr. Kim said, I understand that that's why God had to bless Mormonism, because of the faith of, of Joseph Smith and also a number of the other early followers. They were so serious that God's heart was moved and God had to bless the Mormon church because of the incredible example of faith that, that they demonstrated. So turning our attention to, to the Middle East, if we think about the prophet Muhammad, people often point out, gee, he had so many wives and Mormonism is known by for so much conflict and, and uh, you know, uh, militant attitudes and things like this. But somehow Mormon, this this is Mecca, somehow Mormon, I'm, I'm sorry, the Islamic faith also has prospered and grown to the point where there's one billion, billion Muslims in the world. And so what is it about Islam that somehow God had to bless? And I think we can all understand that what God had to bless was the junk song of the prophet Muhammad. He was so serious about the revelation that he received and so serious to live a faithful life that it really moved God's heart. And for that reason, somehow Islam became so successful. But if we even go a little deeper, we all understand that uh, Islam, yes, it, it goes back to Ishmael. And Ishmael was the elder son of Abraham. And when Abraham and his wife, Sarah, because they were both quite elderly, they couldn't have children Finally, uh, Sarah brought her servant, Hagar, to, to Abraham and said, please, you have to have children through her because I can't deliver you children and you, you need to have a line. And so therefore, somehow she gave uh, Hagar to Abraham and Abraham was able to have his son, Ismael, because of this. But then we know by this incredible miracle, because of the promise that God made, that Sarah also was able to give birth to a child, and that child was Isaac. And when that child was born, and as it began to grow, um, Sarah became concerned because she felt, you know, she felt there was conflict or jealousy on the part of Ishmael and that Hagar's attitude wasn't right. So she went to Abraham and she said, please send them away. They can't be here. And finally, uh, Abraham was kind of brokenhearted. He didn't want to send Hagar away. He didn't want to send Ishmael away, but when he prayed to God, what God indicated was, yes, you should do that. And so he followed and he, he sent them away. And it must have been very, very hard, this young boy, to be sent away from his father and his mother and just sent into, into the wilderness. But the amazing thing is that, you know, Ishmael was raised in the wilderness by his mother, but his mother never allowed him to have any bitterness towards Abraham or to, towards Abraham's son Isaac or to Sarah, to anyone in, in Abraham's family. She didn't allow it, even to the extent that when finally Abraham passed, um, Ishmael returned to, uh, to participate in the, um, the burial ceremonies of his father. And it was, it was Ishmael and Isaac together who buried his father. So somehow there was this bond. Always Ishmael was able to love his father and to love his brother because of the way in which somehow Hagar had carefully cultivated his heart in this special way. And then in Genesis 28, verses 8 and 9, we learn that Esau, the elder brother of Jacob, he married um, two times with Canaanite women. And that broke the heart of uh, Isaac and Rebekah, that he did this. And at some point, Esau understood that he had broken the heart of his parents. And what he did is that he went to his uncle Ishmael, and he asked Ishmael if Ishmael would allow him to marry one of his daughters. And Ishmael um, gave to Esau uh, his daughter Mahalath, because he did not want, he understood how painful it was for Isaac that somehow his son had had not married within the Abrahamic lineage. And for that reason, somehow 
corrected this situation and turned it around. So can you imagine this, this young boy who was pushed out into the wilderness, but he, he, he absolutely wanted to be there and pay homage to his father at the end of his life. And also this young boy, when he saw that his brother was heartbroken because his, um, his son had married outside the lineage of Abraham, he offered one of his daughters so that it would be possible for Esau to comfort the heart of his parents. So such, a, such an amazing in person, this uh, incredible uh, woman of faith, Hagar, was. And um, anyways, the, the point is that, you know, our true mother is like Hagar. She's teaching each and every one of us how to love everyone. I mean, the, t the testimony that we heard this morning from Jeanette, how to love everyone, how to understand everyone's heart, recognize maybe the, the course of tribulation that they went through and that God can't forget the course that they went through. And therefore, through true mother, finally, everyone can be able to be recognized for their offering to God. And we can all learn through true mother how to love everyone as the children of God and the children of of true parents. So those are my reflections uh, today on this uh, venture of going into the Middle East where the true parents have gone over and over again to take on this very challenging situation. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you so much, Dr. Ward. That was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing all these beautiful, um, you know, historic insights for us. And um, now it's time for us to really reflect and share any insights, takeaways, keywords that we've gotten from the reading and Dr. Ward. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed their breakout rooms today and have a lot to take away. If you do, please feel free to share your insights, takeaways in the chat so we can all read. But we will now move on to um, our Chanshin One prayer. I would like to pass it on to Pastor Takino for any announcements and closing prayer for today. Yes, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Um, uh, she start, uh, uh, just since Blue Dragon Tour. Okay. Uh, yes, so uh, yesterday, the Valentine Cruz is sharing how much we understand the true essence of the true mother. Uh, he explained about a dimension, like a two dimension or a three dimension, now dot, then, you know, that we can't, how we can understand the total true mother or heavenly parents. So, but this is actually the true mother's uh, wish, the prayer point. So let's, you know, the, remind this uh, prayer point. For the safety, of the true parents and the true family. For a victorious entrance into the Chong Il Sanctum in Chong Wongun. To successfully witness to new members, especially young people, and for real church growth. For the unification of North and South Korea and the heavenly unified Korea to overcome all crises affecting our world and to realize a heavenly unified world. And as, yes, we continue to have a prayer vision uh, to the... Uh, no. hmm? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and the uh, Blue Dragon two or three days. We did it. Thank you. Thank you. I can share more detailed report later. But uh, yesterday, uh, so far, yesterday, is, uh, more than 400 people come to New Jersey. And uh, we had an uh, amazing Sunday service yesterday. You can watch Sunday service uh, through the YouTube. I watched that uh, YouTube service. It was an uh, amazing, exciting uh, mascot of the Blue Dragon. Uh, uh, thank you, Umi. That was, that was uh, her idea. And uh, yes, so we did it. Uh, so here is the partial of the uh, Blue Dragon Dua picture. Uh, basically, you know, the prayers, Reverend Dunkley, the presentation. Uh, prayer vision and the worship that is at the end of the combo uh, session. So many things happen. And uh, Reverend Dunkley's father visit our church and then to also more public sharing about his uh, message. This is the day second. Uh, we had a purple jacket ceremony and a desperate holy sword inheritance ceremony. Most of the pastors in the New Jersey uh, subregion one, they received the holy sword. So they will go back to the holy, desperate holy sword to multiply to share into the many people. So holy sword, desperate, we also keep on church. We also give the People who missing to receive the Holy Sword. And we have a huge on paper here. And uh, ancestral uh, liberation and uh, evil spirit liberation. And uh, New Jersey, uh, uh, North East region. More, uh, most of the people, I mean, uh, number one, actually, number one, the 
also for attending a request for evil spirit liberation um, among other, other regions and the total 1735 central evil spirit. 1735 evil central evil spirit liberated yesterday, I oh, know, two days ago. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Like, I, I, I don't know how after after that what kind of happening from starting today but uh, yesterday like i shared a whole more than 400 people coming to the sunday service actually that is our vision by end of this year every week like that do they want to uh sunday service every week that is our brand of the new jersey family church Every week, like a same situation coming, happening in Sunday service. Now, we, now this week, uh, New Jersey leadership will go to the uh, Korea with uh, 60 next gen and uh, 13 clergies together. Uh, we will leave uh, this Wednesday to Korea, but this morning devotion continue. So the Dr. Dr. Ward continue to sharing, and after Dr. Ward, uh, Pastor Barbara will be sharing her, her testimonies. And I think I think uh, uh, Janet can continue to be the MC and we are preparing the support also so not no even we are not here the morning prayer vision continue uh also we are preparing the sunday service so this coming sunday uh, we will ask uh, mr david eaton but he will be sharing three opinions about uh we have true mother and uh, especially music and art. So this coming Sunday, uh, Mr. David Eaton will be giving the message on Sunday service. And uh, we will have a holiday celebration on April 28th. When we come back from Korea, April 27th, so we, Sunday, that was Saturday, and Sunday we will be here, and uh, we like to have a holiday, holiday celebration. And we like to share the, the, the Korea trip. I'm still looking for the MC on the Sunday service. If somebody to volunteer the MC on, on this Sunday, please let me know. Okay. Yes, so. Uh, I like, I would like to, uh, also, uh, I need somebody to come here, Chon Shimon, uh, every day. I mean, not every day, but at least once a, once a week, especially next 10 days, uh, next 10 days, while I'm not here. If somebody volunteer can come to the Chon Shimon, I would be appreciated. Next ten days, from April eighteen to April twenty six. Today, I like to ask, I like to invite uh, Mr. Steve Sprague, representing prayer. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Parents. This is a bright new day full of hope and vision. And uh, we are proud to be a part of this, of this church at this time. Many people have been working many years. Many people have been working only a few years, the young, young people. We hope that this vision of, this, the, of the true parents the, and, the, and the teaching of the true parents and the and the victory of the true parents will spread across this world very quickly. 
where we see so many things happening, so many uh, dangerous situations emerging. We know Satan is rising up in his, in his final battle. Therefore, this must be the final battle, and good must rise up even stronger. And we know that the, the victory will come when people, when, when people in the world know true parents, understand true parents, it can transform their lives to, to uh, be, be liberated from the evil and, and, and remake themselves to become the children of God that they were all born to be. Indeed, we pray for this church to be rocking with 400 visitors every Sunday. Why not? What a small number of people to be praying for. So we apologize to God for being so small-minded. But you got to start someplace. We know God wants to work with us. We want to change not just New Jersey, change this entire nation, and then change this world, and 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 solve all these problems that that fill our TV screens every night with a uh, hopelessness and uh, depression. But we are not hopeless or depressed because we have true parents. We know the time. We know the victory is coming. So we uh, we 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 strengthen ourselves. We resolve ourselves. We gird ourselves about the breastplate of righteousness, and we move forward. Let, let's, uh, let's reach out to the people that we know. Let's change the world. Let's educate the world. And let's, let's, let's go to the spirit world with pride and dignity that we made the kingdom of heaven and earth. We offer this prayer all together in gratitude to our true parents and our heavenly father. In my name, Steve Sprague, a blessing to family, our Jews. Raju, please feel free to unmute for unison prayer. Thank you to all of our hearts of special behind the time of joining so that we can benefit this foundation and to this moment I got my for you this morning. Oh, this morning. Oh, 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 so they yeah. always love God I'm grateful for the I pray to have the same heart Throughout my life, many I come to contact especially Rodriguez's children. family will be in your children with your blessing and with your heart. Mine. 
Thank you everyone for the innocent prayer and thank you everyone for joining us here today. I hope to see everyone tomorrow and have a happy Monday. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. Great day. Good afternoon. Have a great day, guys. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.